Greetings, loved ones, and welcome back to another Reno vlog. The day is Friday, September 1st. Do you remember? This is like such a move that my sister does. She's like, she goes like this. <laughs> and I love it. Anyway, yes, it's September. I ended off my last Reno vlog late last night after I finished my Zumba teacher training. Love that for me. And now I'm just loading the dishwasher and I wanted to start off this next vlog and talk to y'all. Because at the end of the last video, I was like, Finley's gonna be taking a little break from the renovations this weekend, like very much so well-deserved and all that kind of stuff because Starfield, this new Bethesda video game that he's been so excited about, that game finally came out late last night. And also what happened late last night, because we had all of the fans on in the house, pulling all of the air and suctioning it from deep down below under the house and just like a lot of air exchange and negative pressure. Sewer gases started leaking from our toilet seal upstairs. And like, we're gonna gut that bathroom and it's gonna be, you know, completely different. But for right now, it's our only bathroom. And so that was very tragic and terrible and it literally started happening like right when Finley logged on to Starfield to start playing the game and like enjoying his first break and it was just one of those things where it was just his luck you know what I mean so he literally spent the entire morning fixing it he had to like go get something from the store to like reseal the toilet and all that kind of stuff so I'm going to put in that footage now well I'm pretty upset right now because uh, I've been waiting for this day for months and years and years and months so I could just play Starfield all day. But the, f <laughs> the only toilet we have, the wax seal that blocks the sewer gases and other stuff from coming out between the toilet and the pipes, the sewer pipes. I'm pretty sure that seal broke. And I think it's getting worse for a while. We've occasionally been able to smell like bad, like sewer gas smell in this closet, which is right beneath more or less where the toilet is. Like up here to the right. I think that might be the toilet drain. I think that this is actually the sewer gas venting because I don't believe we have one that comes up through the roof and that's the exterior of the building. So that must be what that is. So this is just for gases to get pulled up and out of the sewer and then vented somewhere where you won't smell it. But I believe because this is under the toilet, more smells coming out this way because the seal broke and the gases need to go somewhere. But because the toilet's cocked in upstairs. So basically, when negative pressure is created inside of your home, I think your home is like a sealed box, and then if you put like a fan blowing out, that's, it needs to pull air from somewhere, and that will create a negative pressure in your house that'll need to be filled. Like, think of like a bathroom fan or something like that. That's just blowing air out of your house. That it's subtle, but it, it's creating negative pressure. So air needs to come in somehow. It will come in through whatever ways it can come, but one of the many ways it can come is being pulled up from your sewer lines and escape through any sort of broken seals like this. So we've also had a lot of negative pressure in the house because we've had to air it out for the VOCs from the um, oil-based products I'm using to refinish the floor. So I think that's exacerbated the issue possibly. Our toilet's also a little loose here, so probably just getting on and off and whatever using it has continued to up the seal. The toilet's cocked in here. It's cocked in poorly. It's got pretty major cracks, but I still think collectively that's kind of resisting most of the gases and routing them down beneath the toilet because there's no caulking on the underside of this floor or anything like that. And so that's why this smells so much worse in the closet. And that's what I've been confusing me for so long because I was like, I see the sewer pipes here. That's probably the venting. That's probably the toilet drain, whatever. Just nothing made sense, but this makes sense. So I'm glad I conceptually, I'm pretty sure I understand it, but I'm not glad that I'm needing to deal with this issue because I really, really don't want to. I replaced a wax seal once with another guy, and it wasn't that hard, but I have to go to the store to get one, and I have to just double check the process to make sure I don't do anything stupid. I also didn't want to do this because we're going to redo this bathroom, so I didn't want to put in this toilet properly when I'm just going to rip it out and replace it later, but whatever, I can't live like this, so hopefully I can just do it quick. Here's my beautiful set of tools, a utility knife for cutting through the caulking, little wrench thing to undo the bolts, little scraper 
to help with the caulking and to get whatever sh I need to clean out of there. Some gloves because it's about to be fucking nasty. Paper towels I'm probably going to use to block the drain pipe because I want to see what's under there before I go buy a wax seal in case I'm wrong. This will help get the water out of the toilet before I take it off so there's less of a leaking problem. So that's what I'm working with. I'm going to start by turning the water off. Lady, lady, I think. So they warned me about this on older toilets. When you're trying to take these bolts off, the whole screw will turn. Wow. Well, that's probably not supposed to happen. They didn't say anything about just pulling them out. This one, not so much. This is so f***ing gross. I don't think these have ever been changed. This thing's so rusted out. I'm gonna have to use a grinder to get this off. I'm gonna try using these little lock jaw things I have. I forget what these things are called. You can twist this to loosen or tighten or make this bigger or smaller so you fit it to what you're putting it on. I'll just show you on top of it. I asked some car boys about this. This PV blaster right here. This is that good stuff for getting rust off. So we'll see if that loosens it up at all. I'll be honest, I never thought I'd be using it on a toilet. So I need to tighten this way up to get it about the size of that little metal stick. So do you hear how it clamp like that? That's what makes it really lock on. Yeah, so that works. I can hold that steady and take this off thanks to that handy dandy PB blaster, which eats through rust like crazy. This sucks, I don't wanna do this at all. Well, for Megan's sake, I'm gonna stop recording this. One eternity later. Uh, f this. I think I could get it, but it's taking too long. I'm gonna get the grinder. I'll show you the little cutting wheel, I think's badass. I'm supposed to be playing Starfield right now. So this is the cutter blade, real skinny like that, see? Just get it in there. Easy peasy. Took two seconds. Now we're covering these bolts anyways. In the video, the guy flushed the toilet to empty the tank, and then he plunged the toilet to try to push the water down the drain, so I'm gonna try to do that. Damn, that's the biggest float I've ever seen in a toilet. Look at that float in there. Ridiculous. Pretty funny. I've never seen one like that. Okay, no water's filling it up because I turned the water off. Held the handle so it's as far drained as it will in the tank. Not the best plunger, I don't think. A little go down. I'm trying to help but create a seal. I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. So the toilet... Oh, I gotta disconnect the water line. Well, that's not really what you want to happen. You should probably have a better plan than just let all the water fall on the floor. Oh, get the cup. It's broke. I don't give a shit about this floor, so I'm not being careful at all. Let's see, hopefully that's enough. Respect all the plumbers out there. It's one thing to do your own house, but it's somehow grosser when it's somebody else's. Or like I just moved in, so it's like. Wow. Well, that's not what you want to see. Oh, that's so f***ing gross. Holy sh! Oh my god. Ew. This wasn't even close to sealed. Jesus Christ. Just crumbling rust. This is a wax seal like pushed in there. Ew, this is so gross. I think I'm taking this whole thing out though, so I don't really need to be cautious or I clean it too much because I'm gonna need to replace all this crumbling metal. It's crazy, I could be playing Starfield right now. They don't want to see us win. I just need to figure out, please don't tell me it's gonna be hard to get this out. I don't know how this is attached. And I'm nervous that if I take it off, I'm not going to be able to put a new one on. I think that that was like a nail at some point. I'm going to have to re-cock it. I don't really give a shit how it looks, but I still need to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to vacuum this shit up too. I need to replace this metal ring thing and the wax seal. Pretty much everything other than the actual drain. That should help stop the gases from coming up. Maybe I should have done that first. I'm going to vacuum now and throw all this shit out. I don't even want to touch the camera right now. I'll turn it off later. Alright. 
Time to go to the store. One hour later. So two things I should have done uh, before, because there was all that crumbling rust. I should have just vacuumed that up straight away. It's not gonna blow up my house that a piece fell down, but you want to avoid that. And I could have just put the rag in to start with. Wouldn't hurt anything. Would have blocked stuff from falling in and stopped the fumes from coming out. So should have just done that to start with. That would be my tip for you all. Also, just fun fact. Now seeing behind this toilet where they decided not to finish the wall for whatever reason. I mean, I know a reason they couldn't access it, but whatever. That appears to be drywall right there. So I am hopeful, not overly hopeful, but I am hoping beneath there is the same wood walls as in the bedroom and that I can just pop this entire sheet off rather than having to like, I haven't even crossed that bridge yet, but whatever I'll have to do other than that. I just went to the store and here's what I got. I got this Quick Seal Ultra White Cock designed for kitchen and bath. This is a PVC toilet flange. That's going to go right in there and because it's PVC, it won't rot like the last one. He already had this purple primer here for PVC. I got this regular clear PVC cement. The primer put on first, then the cement. It's called a chemical weld. That's how you do your plumbing properly. This spent a little more money because it wasn't that much more because I had to get the hardware anyways. This is a wax ring still, but it's a little fancier with some other stuff. Seems to be a little more forgiving. Like if I set the toilet a little wrong, I can take it off and retry. Whereas a normal wax ring, I'd have to replace that. And hopefully I don't have any trouble. My biggest concern is getting this in those pipes. I know it's a four inch, but I haven't got much plumbing. So hopefully there's no trouble there. Toilets are pretty f***ing heavy. I'll tell you that. I banged the s*** out of my knee when I was getting back in the shower to shower gram. All right, I'm just going to try to clean this out a little bit. I'm going to get my little nail pullers because uh, these rusted nails are still stuck in there. Okay, so it does dry fit. Damn, that's really high up. So you don't want it to be this raised. This is like maybe three quarters, half an inch up. This is supposed to fit half an inch above or one and a half below. Personally, I'm gonna call that an half an inch and it'll probably be perfect once I put the tile down here. I really don't wanna have to do anything else. So I'm gonna pray to God that this works. This thing, I guess you just use pliers and pull it up. I kinda wanna make sure I can do that before I seal this thing forever. What am I supposed to do? I guess I'm just supposed to hammer the sh** out of it. Okay, so I just hammered it outside on the concrete and broke it. I feel like it shouldn't be this hard. They make it look so easy. The instructions. Jesus Christ. That's a drain. Alright, I'm gonna get my tape measure. You want these to be equidistant from the wall. So I gotta check a couple things. Oh god. It's over an inch raised, which is just too high. Uh, all right, I have to go back to Google. It's a lot easier if your flange is too low than it is if it's too high. If it's too high, you either have to build up the floor or cut the pipe lower. If it's too low, you can use like extension things to make it work. So despite the fact that this will probably be pretty close to perfect for when I tile this floor, I'm gonna have to cut this lower so that it works for now and I should still be fine later because I can use something to Raise the difference once the floor height's different. It looks like a Dremel is going to be my best tool for cutting. So I'm basically just trying to cut it to match the subfloor. You're really not supposed to get stuck down the drain, so... Well, dude, it's supposed to look this bad. So that's all I'm looking for. Uh, this thing says it'll still work if it's half an inch over. So I'm gonna leave that as is. I've never done this before. So it's important to get these lined up on either side. Otherwise the bolts will be loose forever and you'll hate my life. This is PVC primer. It does warn you it stains, so don't do what I just did. I don't give a shit about this floor, so this is the glue. Yeah! Okay, these look like they're gonna work. That's the old screw hole, so that'll 
center me up, I think. Alright, I screwed it in. I'm getting there. So this is the fancy thing I got. I won't need this. This is for an extension. But I'll save it in case I need it later. Okay. I believe it goes like that. Now for a nerve-wracking part. Oops. See that rocking's not okay. Five minutes later. I don't think I did a very good job, but I ain't f***ing with this anymore. It's not supposed to rock like that. I can't tell if it's because the phalange is too high or if the floor is uneven and it hasn't been cocked yet. Either way, we'll just have to see if this leaks again. Hopefully it at least survives till I redo the bathroom. I was just not expecting to have to deal with this stupid <laughs> uh, You don't want to tighten those too tight where you can snap the porcelain. Alright, well I guess before I cock it down, I'm gonna hook up the water and see if it'll flush proper. If water comes out everywhere, then at least I know I'm before I cook it down. Please, for the love of God, work. I'll be honest, I'm not very confident right now. I didn't do a very good job, because my heart's not in it, you know? Not only did I already have plants today, but I also don't want to fix this toilet, because I'm going to replace it anyway. All right, let's see. All right, well that was a good first run. I'm gonna go check downstairs. Later. So this is what the toilet looks like now. It appears to be working from everything I can tell. Got a brand new purple splotch on the floor from this horrible task. I would say that's the worst thing I've done since moving in here, both between how disgusting it was, how frustrating it was, and how much I didn't want to do it at the time I was doing it. I did not enjoy that. Alas. It is done, and I'm just praying to God that it actually works and I don't have to think about this again until I remodel the bathroom. And when I remodel the bathroom, I'll be happy to do this because I'm remodeling, not when I'm supposed to be playing Starfield. And you can see the cock that I did a horrible job. This is like already look like shit up front. I couldn't really clean all that stuff up. And I really wasn't too worried about how bad it looked. But yeah, kind of interesting. I was using these uh, little silicone tools using this 15 millimeter corner and it worked pretty well. Please God, stay functioning. This man, he deserves a massage. He deserves an award. I don't know what he deserves, but he deserves it all, okay? Because I just feel so bad. I'm like, oh my God, he was so looking forward to this. And then of course something else in the house like has to happen. But now he's playing his game. And yeah, like I said, I'm loading the dishwasher. It's Friday, but it feels like a Saturday. I don't know what it is about today, but I'm just feeling like it's the freaking weekend already, baby. And I actually have some plans this weekend to meet up with a gal who lives in my town and we're gonna go to the farmer's market and I'm so excited. So I'm gonna do that with her tomorrow. She's the exact same age as me, 26, and her partner is the exact same age as Finley. 27. So it's truly kismet that they live near us. And because Finley's, you know, playing his game and stuff like that, I'm just going to go alone. But if you're the partner of a video game enthusiast, you know how exciting Starfield is for them right now. So I'm just letting him do his thing. You know what I mean? Look at these plastic free detergent tablets that I got from True Earth. I put on my story like a little question box asking for eco-friendly options for dishwasher detergent and i know a lot of people use the little strip laundry detergent from true earth so i wanted to try out their tablet dish detergent that has rinse aid built into it which is iconic because then you don't have to get a whole separate plastic bottle of rinse aid so i'm gonna try a load now with these and also i wanted to say too you know there are a lot of companies out there that are just straight up greenwashing. I'm pretty sure like seventh generation was recently bought out and is just straight up greenwashing now. So I did want to say that for people who suggested that as like an eco-friendly option. They actually are not. They have a lot of harmful chemicals. And this just comes in a little cardboard one. And obviously I'm going to try it out and let you know if it works well. And I'll edit in on the screen with text if it went well. I also think I want to get my nails done this weekend. I want to get a French manicure, but make the tips of them like a beautiful little lavender. Or maybe I should do something more of like a beautiful little burgundy because we're kind of entering the early signs of fall. Very early. There is a slightly yellowing tree in my yard. So 
it's September 1st and suddenly all of the Instagram accounts are like, it's fall y'all. I gotta put our it's fall y'all sign out. Just kidding, I'm not really in the fall spirit or mood yet. When the leaves start changing more, I will be in that spirit a little bit more. But for right now, you know, we just have the regular reno content going on. All right, and my regular life content, I'm gonna be showing you all of it. That's the great thing about these reno vlogs is they're not specific renovation videos like our bedroom renovation video is going to be where it's like just transforming that room. I feel like the reno vlogs give me a lot of leeway where it's like I can show my life and like meeting new people or like showing the part of my life where I'm doing my Zumba teacher training or grocery hauls and just random tasks like that. But then we can also work in like fixing our toilet and all that kind of good stuff. So I don't know. I just feel like I've been having a lot of fun with this format and you guys seem to be liking it as well. So love ya. Anyway, I'm blabbing a lot, but just missed talking to you for 12 hours. <laughs> More moments later. I'm going on a little walk with the dogs. Oh, I love these trees. Some of the tips of them are yellowing. You can see right there. Very exciting times. And we have some dead leaves. The dogs are simply elated that Finley cut the grass. Are you having such a blast already? <laughs> fun, fun, fun. We're gonna go on a little walk. Who knows where we'll go? Only time will tell. More early signs of fall. Yellowing leaves. Dying ones too. We can walk wherever you want to go, Larry. Maybe we go through the woods this way today. I have a little slowpoke tiny one in the back of the group. Come on, tiny. We're gonna keep walking, okay? No airlifting unless you're in long grass. That's the rule. You have to walk. Lazy. I know one boy that's not lazy. Do you guys see how close all these baby trees are together? They're like more twig-like stems and these are the leaves and I'm wondering if they're a type of birch because I feel like they're borderline invasive. There's just so freaking many of them. It's like you can't walk 10 feet without seeing another one and some of them have planted themselves like a foot apart from each other. Oh, someone lost their head. I'm gonna leave that one. Cool. I think this is lion's mane. Awesome. I just saw it like blending in with the leaf brush. Come on, Tiny, where are you? I found the decaying bones of an old tennis ball. And also, I really want to clear out underneath this boulder because then we could try to rock climb it if we got outdoor mats. Hi, mushroom. That's a big one. I'm following my doggies. Wherever they want to go, I go. I guess it's lion's mane season. There's so much of it. It looks like the coral reef. There's more of it like hidden here, there. Awesome, cool. Who do you think lives in there? The Keebler elves? Where's my tiny little elf? There she is. Rue's being very brave and walking the rest of the way even through the very long grass. This is the down tree portion and the trail goes back to the house from here. We still have to clear this out. Speaking of clearing stuff out, I've been picking up some trash this bucket and stuff in the woods. Wow, very regal dogs, very beautiful dogs. You are just the best. Love, love, love you both. Good girl, very brave. That walk will really tire you out. <laughs> it's just like a lot of backwoods walking, but I love it. I'm out of breath and sweaty and that's what I wanted and the dogs are very happy. The next day. Morning glory, y'all. Me and my mushroom are matching. Cuteness. I'm Cuteness Everdeen, and this is my mushroom. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Saturday, and I'm about to go meet up with this gal, Keegan, at the farmer's market. And this morning, I just spent the morning putting up a new video, and so I got up my last reno vlog that you guys would have seen before this one. And late last night, when I didn't show you more what I was doing after my walk yesterday, I was pretty much just editing that last video. And I also took a very late night queuing course, how to queue like a pro in my Zoom the classes so I can be like you know one two three all eyes on me vibes hey we're going this way two 
too. You know, stuff like that. But we don't verbally cue. It's all like visual cueing in Zumba. Unless you're working with people like in Zumba Gold, you may want to use a microphone if you're working with like a senior center or something like that. Anyway, I did that late last night. So now I'm triple certified in various things. Basic Zumba, Zumba Gold, and cue like a pro. I have my three certs, which is great. And I got to get my ass moving because I got things to do today. I have an agenda, okay? Farmer's Market first, hanging out with Keegan. And then I have to go pick up a pair of shoes that I dropped off for repair last week. I did that like not on the vlog. And when I do that, I may try to find a kind of like, I don't know, place a donation center to drop off all these donations at. And then I might go get my nails done. I really want to go get my nails done today. So that's my goal. Okay, I need to message Keegan and tell her I'm going to be like fucking 10, 10 minutes late. What? I got to get on the road. All right. I can't remember if we vlogged here before Finley and I, we've only ever been here once. I've only ever been here once, but I'm back to the Brattleboro area farmer's market. And unfortunately, darling, there's no service. So I hope I can find Keegan. Two hours later. Okay, y'all. I just left the farmer's market and I actually came down to Greenfield, Mass because I want to get my nails done. And then I have to go pick up my shoes. So my plans kind of got a little like jumbled around. I was supposed to go pick up my shoes at 2.30 in Turner's Falls. And then the guy texted me and was like, hey, I can't give you them until five. Like I have to leave the house. So I was like, mm, well, I don't really want to go home in between that. So I think I'm just going to go to Greenfield, get my nails done. And then Turner's Falls is like pretty close to here. Anyway, that's my current plan. I'm about to go to a place called Pretty Nail. <laughs> So we'll see. And I think I'm going to do a burgundy tipped French manicure and maybe it'll even match some of the colors in here. But let me do a quick farmer's market haul and also say, hey, Keegan, I know you watch the vlogs and meeting you was a total sleigh. Obviously, I already told her this a bunch of times. I really, really enjoyed talking to her. And I do want to say, too, I've spoke about this before in the past, like meeting up with people who watch me online. I love doing it because people, they are already know so much about my life and like they probably already know enough to be like yeah I'd probably vibe with her right so like that's why they would want to reach out and meet up or whatever but my thing that I struggle with sometimes is like I can be so used to people listening to me that sometimes I just talk so much like I feel like multiple times when I was talking to her I was like I'm talking too much and like I even am conscious enough about it to like say that out loud but for some reason and it doesn't make me stop talking so much. So I also try to find this balance of like, not feeling like the person I'm with is being interviewed by me, but I do want to know more about their life because they do know, like, especially if they've been watching like Keegan since, you know, high school or whatever, like literally like 10 years, you know, you know a lot about my life, you know about my family, maybe you watch my sister, you know where I've lived and where I've been around and whatever. And sure, sometimes I meet people like I met Irene this past week who like does not watch the videos anymore but she used to when I was like Miss Megan makeup you know so it's interesting when some people kind of fall out and then they're like I actually don't know what you're doing now <laughs> you know and so then I can update them more on like what's going on but the people who do keep up with my videos and stuff when I meet you in real life I do feel more of a responsibility to be like okay now tell me about you because you already know about me you know but it was very like easy vibes and also I just want to say too like I'm trying to get better about privacy things and just like not talking about other people so much so I'm just gonna leave it at that I had a great time <laughs> I'm not gonna like go into a bunch of depth about her or something but I will show you what I bought so I'm gonna show you what I got for myself so cute I got this little like alpaca kind of poncho vibe so it actually matches the colors of what I'm wearing today but it's like kind of short and it would just make more sense once I show you it on but this company is so freaking cute alpaca wool made in Vermont and it gives you like a little care sticker and then it also shows you the alpaca that donated the wool I got some things as well for a certain somebody's birthday that's coming up soon in my family so I'm not gonna share whose birthday or what I got 
those for. But we both got some chocolate croissants and ate those down by the river. It was very cute. And we got some lemonade. Keegan's recommendation was a major sleigh. You know, I love a good lemonade. But I will say, with my paper straw and my compostable cup, it's that point with the paper straw now where it's just like fully, you know, so soggy and breaking. I also wanted to get a fresh loaf of bread, not just for sandwiches, but for cheese and stuff. So I got this gorgeous loaf that is potato bread. And I love a good tater, you know me. And then I also got some delicious tiny plums. We used to have a plum tree that was like growing this kind of same size and variety on our farm in Oregon. So it was kind of nostalgic for me to get these and have a delicious treat. And then last but not least, I got some gorgeous flowers. Look at these bad boys, just stunning. And my favorite one is this kind of light lilac purple color. Ah, oh, amazing. And then also like this really big pink dahlia. It's dahlia season here in Vermont. So they gave me like a wet paper towel around these wrapped in a plastic bag, but all the flowers were actually on display in mason jars. So I thought that she was gonna like give me the mason jar, but that would probably just be very expensive to give away a ton of mason jars. But because I got that cup and because I'm going to be out on the town today, I'm gonna to get rid of my ice and then just put a little bit of water in my old cup that I used for my lemonade. Oh no, I poured water on myself. I can feel it on my dress. Anyway, I'm having a day to myself today. Finley's at home playing his game. Love that for him. Just taking it easy, taking a break, taking a load off, if you will. And speaking of taking, I'm taking my sweet time out on the town today. Had a luxurious time at the farmer's market. Got all of my goodies, got my flowers. I got everything that I wanted. That's seriously such an amazing farmer's market. If you guys ever come and visit Brattleboro, um, I believe it runs from the summer through October. So you should definitely go Saturdays 9 to 2 p.m. to the Brattleboro area farmer's market. There are so many different sellers and like there's live music and great food and just tons of local farms and a lot of like the food that you can get there is all served in like compostable, you know, <laughs> containers. So I had an amazing time and I'm really happy I went because I hadn't been yet this season since moving here. We had been last year though, when we were here for our like second part of our honeymoon and house hunting, we did go to the farmer's market then and got like crepes and just had a lovely little time. It was very cute, but I hadn't been back since. So it was nice to return. And when I'm filming this right now. It is Labor Day weekend, so there are tons of tourists from Massachusetts and Connecticut and New York, and I saw license plates from Florida, so it is certainly bumping up here in Vermont this weekend, but um, I guess I should say up here in Massachusetts right now because that's where I am. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my nails done, and I'll probably get a pedicure as well because mama needs one, all right, and I will just talk to you guys when I'm done, I guess. Love ya. One debt to society later. Dude, <laughs> I can't believe this. Okay, so I went to Pretty Nail. They did a really great job and were so kind and very quick and it was great. But I think I like have brain damage or something because I fully forgot that I wanted to get a French manicure with red tips and instead I just got red. Also, this is like very much so not the color that was on the bottle. It looked way more burgundy, not like Christmas red, you know? And it's also sparkly. I just like got into one of those panics, you know what I mean? Where like when you go to get your nails done and then they normally ask you, do you like the color? And he didn't ask me that. So he just like kept painting them. And I saw it go on and I was like, is that glitter that I see in there? But then I was like, oh no, maybe it's just like how the light's hitting it. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh, that is glitter. I like the shape of my nails. It's like square round, definitely more on like the square side, but I just wish I like spoke up for myself more. <laughs> you know, those times where you're just like, this was my fault that I like didn't say anything. And I completely forgot that I wanted to get red tips and I just have red nails, which is fine. Like red nails are classic and sexy. I'm just confused. I'm like, there was nothing on the bottle that said that this had glitter in it, but there is just definitely 
glitter in them. And I don't know, I also feel like it's way like more see-through than I expected. So I'm not really obsessed with the color. I did like the place though, and I would go back. Anyway, um, I'm waiting for my toes to dry. I actually got like a navy blue on my toes and that color is nice. It's like kind of a midnight blue. It looks like pretty dark. They definitely are dry enough. She told me that it wasn't dry enough for me to put my shoes on, so I walked on the street. So humiliating, by the way. Whenever you have to walk in these in public, it's like, okay you're like tripping on them and like catching them on the fucking cobblestones and cement just truly really one of those times where you're just like yeah the human experience it's like it's not so great sometimes when you have to do stuff like this also like i got cat called on the way back to my car like how you doing beautiful i'm like what the f hasn't happened to me since I lived in LA. Actually, no, that's a lie. Since I lived in Oregon and would sometimes go to downtown Portland, it would happen there. But anyway, I need like a reset, you know? It's only 3.30 and I'm not able to go and pick up my shoes until five. So I might just try to pass some of the time here in Greenfield and like there's a record store right in front of where I'm parked. So I might go explore in there really quickly. And I'm not very hungry. I had chocolate croissant that really filled me up. So Turner's Falls is only 10 minutes from here. I might just kind of vibe out for a little bit, look in this vintage vinyl store and live my best life and deal with these. This is not burgundy. This is like crimson red. Whatever, dude. <laughs> They're nice and they were cheap. <laughs> Having my little flowers next to me. So I'm gonna go to Turner's Falls now. I did go to Greenfield Records for looking at their vintage vinyl, but it was just a lot of oldies and none of the oldies I wanted. I've really been on the lookout for Carol King Tapestry and ABBA Arrival for a while, and they just had way more like rock. And you know when you go into a vinyl store and they're playing like a very experimental, kind of like a, a weird, record and you're just like this is pretty intense like not very inviting you know it was kind of that vibe and I was like trying to get into it for a while and then I was like I think I should just go honestly I'm just gonna go I'm gonna head to the survival center now it's kind of near where I need to pick up my shoes from repair anyways and I'm pretty sure that they'll take all of my donations back here my cups and mugs and all that kind of good stuff so I'm gonna go do that. Also, I wanted to say Greenfield is pretty freaking cute. There's a lot of coffee shops and vinyl stores and diners and cute looking restaurants and all that kind of good stuff. There's a park next to me that looks friggin' adorable. So if you live around here, you let me know. Or if you live more towards Turner's Falls, you know, Deerfield, Northfield, wherever. While I'm at this red light, I just wanna say, I love all of these nice brick historic buildings on the East Coast, it's really slay. All right, I just emptied out my donation bin back there and dropped everything off at the Franklin Area Survival Center, which is a great place to donate. Um, they had a ton of dinnerware and stuff, so when I told them I had a ton of kitchen stuff, they were like, perfect. <laughs> and now it's 4.30, and I kind of just want to, I don't know, maybe like go get a drink somewhere? I really can't decide. I'm just like trying to pass the time, and I'm literally meeting the shoe guy at this center in a half hour, but I just like didn't really want to buy anything. I already bought stuff at the market earlier today, and I just kind of felt like... Also, the survival center, like those goods are not for me. You know, it's for other people. I wanted to kind of peruse and look around, but yeah. All right, I came to the rendezvous in Turner Falls. Actually, Finley and I have been here before and it's pretty good. They have a lot of like vegetarian options, you know, cauliflower wings, that whole thing. But I just didn't have enough time to order food before I have to just go back to the survival center and meet my shoe repairman. But um, I did want to grab a drink. And so I came here and I was thinking to myself, I was like, am I just drinking because I'm bored, you know? And the answer was yes. So instead of getting alcohol, I got like a muddled strawberry in soda water and rosemary syrup mixture and it was delicious and incredible. It was like a nice refreshment. So now I'm refreshed and I'm gonna go get my damn shoes. All right. I know some of y'all can relate to that, by the way, just drinking because you're bored. I'm like, mm, what else should I do? 
maybe it's time for drink o'clock. Just ridiculous. Ugh. Every time I see my nails in the camera, I'm like, this is not the color I wanted. Why is it mistletoe red? It's literally the same red as the recording red light on my camera. This ain't no burgundy, baby. I'm gonna stop complaining about them. I'll get over it in like a few hours, maybe. Bye Felipe, my king, fixing my shoes. He totally killed it. I'm like creepily filming him walking away. I don't even think you could see him. Like I said, I wasn't vlogging when I originally dropped these shoes off, so you never even got to see the before. But both of these shoes were completely separated from the soles. So he literally sewed them back on here perfectly. So they're not going anywhere. He was just joking around with me. He was like, you're gonna climb up some trees? And I was like, no, not trees, but mountains, hopefully. And now I can do it totally fine. Also, I got some tea for you guys. So he repaired these for me because one one of them was completely ripping away from the sole and he was like I do repair on sandals like this all the time especially for Birkenstocks the Birkenstocks are like what I see the most being brought in and I was like my Birkenstocks they don't need to be repaired but they just kind of like they're constantly giving me blisters he also was like these are better than Birkenstocks don't tell anybody I told you but they really are and they're cheaper too what brand are these caster my friend summer thrifted these for me and gave them to me because they were smaller than her size uh, i wear like a six or sometimes a six and a half but he was like these are better than the birkenstocks because they have more arch support and i was like yeah spin some facts felipe anyway mariachi shoe repair in turner's falls he used to have a business it closed during the pandemic and now he just kind of does the business out of his house i believe but you can like find him on facebook and stuff like that but unfortunately um he's going to mexico for 10 months well for Fortunately for him, because he can hang out with his family and see everybody, but not fortunate for you guys if you need any shoes repaired. He posted on Facebook being like, I'm about to leave, so if you need your snow boots repaired, hit me up now. Anyway, I'm gonna head home. <laughs> Finally, it's been a long day, but a fun day indeed. And I'm listening to Drew Barrymore on Armchair Expert. It's a good pod episode. I never heard this one, so no I figured, where. why not? One weekend of pampering later. Morning glory, y'all. This is a nice little filming spot for me. Today is Monday. I'm sorry if you can hear the fan. It's gonna be like a 90 degree week, so I need the fan on. It's really weird because it's September and it's only starting to feel like summer now. You know, it's like, why are we having a high 80, 90 degree week at the beginning of September? Makes no sense to me. Thanks a lot, climate change. Okay, anyway, that's why you hear the fan on in here. And this morning, we just had our roofing company that we've been actually trying to see for the past, like, I don't know, two and a half, three weeks come by. And we talked to him for, well, hell, it was about two hours, 10.30 to 12.30. And we just went over like the 3D model and talked about vinyl siding versus James Hardy board and the price point difference. And I was really thinking that we would do board and batten Hardy board and do like vertical siding like the house already is. But then when we went over all the options, we were like, okay, this just is more expensive to do vertical siding siding, especially on this home. And I agree with him, you know, the roofing and siding guy when he said this, but he was like, typically a house that is kind of smaller would want to use vertical siding to make the house look larger. Your house is already quite large, so you don't really need to make it look like a skyscraper. And I was like, you're making some good points, Justin. Yes, yes. And it also helps to get second opinions and multiple people in our family have been like, don't like the vertical siding, you should really get horizontal. And this house is also a pretty weird shape. I don't know, just to complement that weird shape, it, it may be better just to do the horizontal. So we talked about that, we looked at it on the 3D model, we went through all the color options and colorways for the vinyl and then we talked about doing like an accent area on the um, bonus room up here i'm calling it the bonus room but it's like right above this wing that i'm in and it's completely unfinished that attic that we want to make children's bedrooms and a bathroom in the future and we both just think it would look really cool if we had like cedar shakes on the front of the house in that area you know what i mean but we also discussed all of the options because cedar shakes are really expensive getting wood from canada when Canada is, you know, on fire, makes lumber costs astronomical, like to the point where they were almost in the pandemic, which is wild. And we have to put 
plywood underneath our roof because how it's framed out right now. I think I discussed this in moving vlog number six when this company first came out, but because we have these big wide plank boards with huge gaps in between them, you can't just like put any roofing material on top of that and expect it to hold when you're trying to nail into a huge gap. So then we would have to cover a lot of the roof underneath the roof, I mean, in plywood, and plywood cost is, like I just mentioned, very crazy. So we were just going over all of those price points and like getting real about it with this company. Because weirdly enough, the two other companies that we've gotten quotes from haven't mentioned having to put a bunch of plywood down. So don't really understand why they don't care, but this company cares a lot. And it's a very expensive thing to do that. So I don't know. I know that this company that just came over, like they have amazing reviews and they care a lot about like cleanup before and after, like leave no trace behind on the property, which I really appreciate because in Oregon, when we had our roof replaced on our rental after the ceiling literally caved in, in the kitchen, the guys who came out, sure, like they installed a nice asphalt shingle it looked nice, but they left so much trash on the property. I was cleaning up trash from them for like a month after the job. And I think that that's actually pretty common. So it's nice to find a company that like actually does care about the trash cleanup. But again, it's like, I've already been cleaning up a bunch of trash on the property. It's not like I'm not used to it, but I don't want people adding more trash to my yard. Anyway, those are just some random things that I wanted to say today and go over with you guys. We'll see what we end up deciding. We basically, when the guy was leaving, we were both like, if we don't contact you within the week, you know, we're gonna marinate on it, but you can call us next Monday and we can discuss our options or we can tell you if we're gonna go with a different company because either way, we don't wanna waste their time. But yeah, it's definitely gonna be an expensive job to replace the roof and the siding and we can also piece it off if that's something that we wanna do. But again, we just need to discuss all of our options. But Finley just left to go run errands and I'm going to have breakfast and also try to cross off some of my to-dos on my list. Just trying to book some things for our family vacation and look into um, getting a vet for the dogs because they don't have a vet here yet and they haven't needed to go to the vet, but it would be nice to look over those. Happy Monday, happy Labor Day, actually, when I'm filming this. Soon after. Well, Finley and I are in the car now going to a fair for Labor Day because we realized, well, I realized after vlogging last, I was like, oh, I can make some calls, check off some to-dos today. Nope, it's Labor Day. I don't know why the roofing company was working on Labor Day, but nobody else is. So none of the other calls that I was trying to make and check off my to-dos of went through. So we're just gonna go to the fair and have a cute little day. Come on, lady, come on. Come on, big when you feel small. Come on, straight, come on. Sometimes you don't come home at all. The class is just a real uh, uniform group, a lot of angularity. And it is the correctness in uh, their loin today that puts them over the group in third uh, with our uh, winning uh, mature cow and then our uh, winter calf. Uh, just when I compare the heifers of the two groups, the group in second just a little bit nicer in that loin region today. We didn't stay at the fair too long. We just ate before we went and a lot of fair food is just, you know, it's nice to get when you're hungry, but if you're not hungry, then you're like, I don't really want fried dough right now or a cone of ice cream. So we pretty much just looked at the cattle. They were doing some kind of like a ranking system on the cattle. It was pretty cool to see like the dairy farmers that I buy from the store there having their cattle ranked on the past clip that I just put in. They were ranking them based off of like their symmetrical loins and how they looked and their, I don't know, their milkability, I guess. But in my grocery haul that I put up in the past vlog, I was showing that I got that yogurt from Stonyfield and they used to actually sell at Wegmans too when we lived in Virginia. And one of the farms out here, Miller Farm, who we also buy milk from, supplies their milk to Stonyfield yogurt. So that was pretty cool. And I saw the delicious pudding that I get from Echo Farm. I saw their cows there. So awesome. I love cows. I can't get enough of cows, honestly. I think about them 
every day almost about how I want a cow. But you know, dreams are dreams until they come true. So anyway, now we're gonna head home. Just picked up a lobster roll from the country store and I got there when they're closing. So they gave me a little bit of a deconstructed one. They gave me the lobster in here and a little roll in here so I can make my own. And now I got some left over. Awesome. Many secret patties later. That lobster roll was so good. I ate the entire thing and then I ate the extras as well because we have like hot dog buns over here. So then I just opened one of those bad boys up, popped the rest of it in there. Then I had two lobster rolls. It's perfect. Perfect meal for me. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do now. Honestly, it still feels like the freaking weekend. I really don't want to do any kind of work or task, but we'll see. <laughs> so if you don't hear from me for the rest of the day, you know, I've just been big chilling. Next morning. As I predicted, it's the next day now. <laughs> Last night, all I did was watch Julie and Julia. I took a shower to cool myself off from the rampant heat and laid in front of the fan and just watched that movie and played on my little Switch and just had a totally wicked time. So we had a very relaxing weekend, needless to say. Our long Labor Day weekend was well spent. And this morning, Finley headed to the dump with a small load of stuff that we've just been collecting on our front porch because we don't have trash people here. I think I mentioned this in a previous moving vlog. There are people we could hire, but it's kind of a motivator to live a less wasteful life when you're the one taking it and seeing how much trash you produce. So we just kind of have been collecting it, sorting it, and then Finley goes to the dump. So he just went to go do that. And then also while he's out, he has to get new polyurethane coating for our upstairs floors because he meant to get an oil-based polyurethane and instead got a water-based one and then just realized right before he was gonna start coating the floors upstairs and was like, wait, this is wrong when we were reading the bottle and how long it would take to dry because we're gonna have to do a couple of coats. Anyway, I have my coffee and I'm wearing just a very small outfit today because it's really sweaty already. I'm already covered in a layer of sweat and it's only 11 a.m., brother. But I think while Finley's gone, at least until he gets back, I'm going to be cleaning the kitchen and ridding it of this layer of filth that's everywhere, finally, because I meant to do this last week and then I couldn't, so I'm gonna do it now. And he told me that once he starts doing the polyurethane, I'm gonna need to wear a respirator mask. So as much as I can get done before I need to put the respirator on would be preferred, because like I said, it is damn hot. And when you put a respirator on, it only makes you hotter, but they are necessary for all the fumes and stuff like that for the floor. But that's my plan today. I slept really well and I'm ready to just take on the day. And I think later actually, I might go to Zumba and see what the Zumba is like in the Northeast. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna listen to my possible Zumba class playlist. I need to listen to it a couple times through and just decide if this is what I actually want to choreograph to. I think it is, but we have to see. I'm gonna to listen to this all the way through and hopefully clean a ton of this kitchen. I'm gonna start here and work my way around through this whole area, just cleaning off the counters, polishing things, getting all the sawdust off and whatnot. Let's begin. struggling with this area up here. A lot of these boards are not sanded completely smooth. So they have these like little rough edges and the rough edges on the wall collect dust. And so it's very dusty. I don't know if you can see, but it's very dusty in this corner on these walls over here. And I was trying to get some of the dust off of here, but I'm not tall enough to reach up there, you know? So I don't know, dude. I don't know if it's one of those things where it's like only I can see it in certain light, but it is really bothering me. So I think if it's bothering me, I should just do something about it.
y'all. So I'm finally cleaning the stove off. I feel like the stove top is the most dirty out of anything in the kitchen because I've been like occasionally wiping the countertops, but because I had all of that stuff on the stove, I haven't really been, sorry, cleaning the stove. So I took everything off. I'm not even using this right now, so like, I could just use it as a display like it was before for kind of like my mushroom pots and stuff, but honestly, I'm just kind of like wanting just to clear off the space as much as possible right now and just make it look a little less cluttered and I'll find places for all of those pots and Dutch ovens and cutie things later. Also, I turned on the camera to talk to you guys because I just got off the phone with the propane people. So they came a week ago to just kind of like survey the scene. And when the guy left, I told you guys, he was like, we'll call you and get something on the books. And I was kind of unsure about like, just waiting for them to call me because I feel like sometimes, and this isn't just to say like every company is like this, but I feel oftentimes like they just forget about you. So I called today and they had indeed forgotten about us. And then when I was on the phone with them, they were like, okay, so we're gonna install three propane tanks it would be like, I don't know, I think like 112 gallons each or something like that of usable propane. And I was like thinking back to when we were in Oregon and how big of a tank we had. And I'm pretty sure it was like a 500 gallon tank, you know, and our oil tank in the basement is 500 gallons. So I was like, do you guys offer a 500 gallon tank? And they were like, um, for your property, let me like look into it. And then they had to call people and then they just called me back. And they said that they could do a 500 gallon tank, but we would have to dig the trench. They don't dig trenches for the propane line. And so I told them that I would call them back once, you know, my husband gets back home and we can go over our options or whatever. And they were like, okay. So that's the update on that as of today. But I tried to explain to them on the phone this morning, like we would really love to get you guys out as soon as possible to do the job because we have not had a working stove since moving in to this property at the end of July. So it's been a month and a half or so, you know, and she was very sympathetic and was like, totally, we can try to get something like on the books ASAP. So I feel good about that, at least that maybe they'll try to kind of push us up in their scheduling or maybe we could try to get on like a cancellation list or something. Anyway, everything in here is so freaking sawdusty. It's truly shocking. I'm like, how did the sander get so much crap onto everything? So I'm just trying to like dust off all the tops of everything. And also while I'm at it, you know, like vacuum all the cobwebs and everything that has accumulated since we've moved in. But it's looking really good over here. And I'm taking clutter out that like does not belong here. That's just kind of made its way into the kitchen. So that's what I'm doing and it's going well so far. And I think I might have to revise my Zumba playlist. I listened to it, it's like 55 minutes long and it's not the length that's bothering me. It's more like, I feel like there's not enough downtime songs. Like I really love high energy songs, but not everybody does. So I need to work more of those in and move some stuff around. <laughs> Okay, after like two hours, I just finished cleaning in here. It looks way cuter over here than before I moved some things around and cleaned off all over here and here and took out some clutter here. And then Finley just got home and said that he'll need to sand more. So good thing I did this for nothing. <laughs> I feel like this is just truly and honestly a lost cause. And I have been seeing some comments that are like, why don't you just tarp it? But I don't know how to tarp this large of an area right here. Like the main issue with all of the sand coming into the kitchen is because this whole area is just wide open. And so is the staircase. So immediately when he sands up here and right here, it just all rains down to here. And I just feel really stupid that I cleaned and I feel really frustrated and like I wasted my time. One long angry line later. Incoming rant alert, even though I've already, I feel like been ranting in this video. At least I'm just warning you now, okay? So if you're not wanting to hear me complain for a little bit, then just, you know, fast forward. Today has just really been one of those days, you know, where everything is just seemingly going 
not as planned. First, I just wanted to say, like, I think that the sanding for the polyurethane is not gonna be as much sawdust as it was for the wood floors. Finley doesn't have to use the orbital sander or the belt sander for it, which both have fans in them that basically like, well, hypothetically, they would blow all of the dust into the collection bag, but he's not even gonna be using either of those sanders for this project anymore. He's going to be using like, you know, on a Swiffer pad, like a Swiffer mop, how you can wrap a certain layer of something around the Swiffer. He did that, but with a piece of sandpaper Paper. So we'll see if that creates a little bit less dust than the orbital or the belt sanders At least he said that he really thinks that it will and he knew that I was just in a really bad mood So he was like, maybe you should just go drive around, you know, just go do something and I was like totally So that's why I'm in the car and he knew I was pissed off because I just finally got on the books with the propane company And when I made the appointment, they were like and somebody will be home, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, totally and it just did not cross my mind at all that the day that they said to schedule the appointment on I'm going to be out of town so I was like what why did I do that and then I immediately had to call them back and then I got put through to like not my local office they were like oh yeah we'll try to reach out to the service team and somebody will call you from the service department and then when somebody called me she was like hey this is the Burlington location what can I do for you and I was like I'm not in Burlington <laughs> I'm in Southern Vermont. And she was like, oh, it seems like they put you through to the wrong person. Just wait, they'll give you a call. So now I'm just waiting again. Anyway, I might just have to deal with this tomorrow because I just feel like I'm doing everything incorrectly. I also have a big pile of mail next to me right now because I'm gonna take two or three things to the post office. I also need to go, our printer is not currently set up, so I need to go and print off a label to return. This is another thing that just went like wrong. We ordered a new mailbox, right, off of Etsy. It's super cute and I'm obsessed with it. But the day that it came, I was like, oh, those are two of the same size boxes stacked on top of each other. And I took it inside to Finley and I was like, I hope that the seller didn't accidentally send us two because I only paid for one. And he sent us someone else's order. So I messaged him and I was like, hey, this is supposed to go to like a woman named Michelle in Florida, like not come to me. Even though we did get ours, I was like, do you want me to send it to her or send it back to you to send to her? And I was like, I really don't mind. Like I can send it to her next time I'm at the post office. Like I'm one of those people who go to the post office a lot because I do. And he was like, oh, if you could send it to her, that would be great. Here's the shipping label if you want to print it. And then I realized I don't have a printer. So now I'm like doing a favor for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that messed up. Anyway, so I need to like go print off that label. I also need to take this return back to Staples so that they can send it back to Amazon because I ordered these like trail cameras to see the wildlife on our property. And I ordered the same ones that my neighbor Steve in Oregon had and suggested to me. And he always posts his like wildlife videos from, you know, the BLM land and the logging land behind our old Oregon property. He always posts them on Facebook and they're like really high quality and great. Great. So I reached out to him and he like told me that he uses the what Moultrie mobile edge ones And then as soon as we got it Finley was like these are cellular trail cameras You know that you like need to pay a subscription for most of these right and I was like what and then we looked into it And it's literally ten dollars a month to have the cameras and Finley and I were both like well We don't want to do that like we don't care that much, you know <laughs> So like we're not using them for hunting or anything. We just genuinely wanted to know what kind of animals are around the property. Anyway, I need to return them and try to find one that doesn't have a monthly subscription because I think those do exist or at least one might exist that has like a free plan. So I need to return that. I need to send back the mailbox. I also need to send back my plain products empties because I got new ones. And then I also am gonna have to go hand deliver this to this woman. We got something for this woman, Miranda. And it's like not even the same street numbers as our address. And it's a completely different street. Like she lives in my town, but I don't know where. So I need to go deliver that to her and be like, hey, Amazon delivered this to the wrong house. And then I decided might as well just pack my Zumba clothes and stay out until I have my Zumba class. And then I can come home after it and hopefully have a clearer mind than I have right now. You know, like I said, it's just one of those days. I just feel like 
everything I'm doing has some kind of extra step attached to it or is going wrong or whatever. So I'm gonna drive around and take Finley's advice and listen to Mac Miller and live my best life. So that's my current plan. Thank you for listening to my rant. And if you're having a bad day, I hope that your day gets a little bit better and that maybe you get some Zumba Zumba in or something. Love you. 20 minutes later. Okay, story time that made my day a little bit cuter and sweeter. I went to go drop off that package that got accidentally delivered to my house and nobody was home. So I like wrote them a note from just like a ripped up piece of paper in my car and left it on top of the package on their porch. And then when I was pulling out of their driveway, this man was driving up at the same time and I kind of like waved him down and was like, hey, do you live here? And he was like, yeah, I do. What's up? And I was like, I just dropped off a package from Amazon that got delivered to my house. And he was like, oh, thank you. Like I literally just went to the post office and they were like, I don't know, sir. It got delivered to your mailbox, it says. And he just moved here too. So like I told him where I lived and he was like, I'm sorry. I don't know where that is. Like I just moved here and I was like, that's fine. I didn't know where you lived. You know, I've never heard of this road before and I don't know how they got ours mixed up because we are very far apart from each other. Sorry, my camera just died. <laughs> not shocking after the day that it's been. But anyway, so what was so cute is while I was talking to him, I literally thought that it was just him in the car because he had like tinted windows in the back and then a window just slowly started going down in the back and there was just this little toddler and then a tidier baby next to her. And the toddler was just like, like staring at me and I was like, hi, and she was like, <laughs> and I just thought it was so cute. Literally, whenever I see a child, it makes me happy. I know that that sounds really weird, but like anytime that I'm out and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of families here. I'm a happier person when I see it's a family event or if I see a child on the street being adorable, you know, it makes me happier compared to those people who are like, kids are the worst, keep them inside. I don't want to see your kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that made me happy. And he was also really grateful that I brought it back to him because this has happened to me before when I lived in other rural towns, you know, like in Virginia, somebody's package got delivered to my house and I brought it back to the post office and they were like, we're not Amazon, you know? We just drop them off, don't know what happened, can't take it back now. And I'll be like, what? So I just take it upon myself now to deliver it myself rather than like take it back to the post office and then have them re-deliver it. Like it doesn't take that much time out of my day. A few minutes later. I'm finally feeling helpful today for the first time and I'm so excited. So Finley's been trying to get his new prescription switched from our Virginia pharmacy to our Vermont one. And it has just been the most inconvenient time that he's gone in. He's gone in two times, if not three, I think three times right before their lunch break. And then they'll always like take the note down and take his phone number down and then never call him. And he needs it. It's his antidepressants. He doesn't care that I'm telling you what the script is. You know, if you're on antidepressants, you know how fucking hard it is when you don't have them. So him even going in and having to go through all of the hoops and whatever, like switching it has been frustrating. And then the fact that they're like not returning turning his calls and not giving him the script is even more frustrating. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be helpful today and I'm gonna go in for you because I already have to go into town. <laughs> so I went in and I basically just explained them the situation. They were like, oh, we have that. And the issue actually was your insurance. Like we were billing your old insurance in Virginia, but you're living in Vermont now and that insurance has been canceled. So they were running into a ton of roadblocks on their end too. So I was like, just out of pocket, how much would it be? And they were like 1730. And I was like, let's just do that. And then I'll put in my new insurance whenever my ID cards come in the mail because they still haven't. So anyway, that's what's up with me. <laughs> and now I'm gonna head to hopefully take a Zumba class. They didn't answer me on the phone when I tried to call ahead and see if like I could even take the class when I'm not a member, but I'm gonna go drive there and try. One pair of pants later. Okay, the sun's really bright, but I just changed in the back of my car and I'm gonna go try to take my first Zumba class here. Hope it's fun. One hour later. So I just got out of class. It was really fun, but I will say it was very different. Like the moves that the woman was doing, the instructor, I some of them I hadn't seen before and her tempo was kind of different. Most of the time in Zumba, it'll be like four of these, then four of these, then two then two, then one, 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 you know? And then we'll do stuff like that where it's mostly in groups like that. But she was doing a lot of moves in groups of three and her choreography was definitely more like intense in the way of like not 
beginner friendly, not in a bad way, but I was just like, damn, she's really like, I could tell that she used to be a dance teacher because of like the stuff she was throwing in. My phone just ran out of memory and my camera's almost out of battery. So I'm gonna talk really fast. But basically at the end of class, I went up to her and introduced myself and she asked me straight up, are you an instructor? Cause you did really good. And I was like, I just got certified as one. Thank you so much for asking. And I'm wondering, you know, you guys only do what two classes a week? And she was like, yeah, I teach Tuesdays. And then the other girl she teaches on Saturdays. But I basically put myself forward and she was like, let me friend you on Facebook and plug you in to anybody I know. Cause she works for the town. And I told her that I'm certified in Zumba gold as well. And she was like, oh, you should reach out to the senior center. And I was like, okay. And she shot me a message on Facebook and I'm going to talk to her more about all of those kinds of things. But I wanted to shoot my shot and I got an application and I got somebody's phone number to call as well. And I'm feeling nervy. I don't know. I'm like, do I want to teach here? Do I want to try out some different places? Should I try another class this week and then, you know, put myself forward for that one? Don't know. We'll just have to see. So I'm going to weigh my options and, you know, just do my research and stuff because there actually isn't that many Zumba classes near me. I know that there might be one near Keene as well, but I don't know if I want to drive that far. Keene is like 45 minutes from where I live. So it would be kind of a lot. You know, I want to stay within the like half hour range. One nap later. Morning glory, y'all. I'm folding the laundry and I'm going to put in a little story time now of kind of why I look like this. So mind my look, okay? So some of you may remember this, but yesterday when I was cleaning the kitchen, I said briefly that I needed to get as much done while Finley was out of the house going to buy the polyurethane. And I was gonna do as much cleaning as I could because when he got back, I would need to clean in a respirator mask because of the VOCs in the polyurethane coating. And you're just not supposed to breathe that shit. When I was growing up and my parents were redoing our hardwood floors in my childhood home, we literally stayed at a hotel for a week just so that the fumes could kind of dissipate from the home and the hardwood floors could cure and all of that stuff. But we are not leaving as of at least right now to go and stay at a hotel because Finley's working on the floors all day and then at night we just sleep in this wing of the house and it doesn't smell at all in this wing. But when we go into the other space where the kitchen is and the dining room and the space we evacuated a week ago, thank God that we did that, by the way. We probably would have ended up doing a similar, you know, moving the bed into here once all of the polyurethane coating went down on the floors anyways, because we would know that it was too stinky to sleep in or we wouldn't want to sleep in respirator masks. But yeah, we wear respirator masks every single time we go into that space now, like if I have to cook something in the kitchen or if I need to go and get the dog food or get something out of the fridge or whatever. But when I left Zumba yesterday, I was just like, woo, excited about life, you know, interesting possible job opportunity. Also on that note, I took an application home, but after further marinating on that, I don't know if I'm going to apply to the place that I went last night, just because the instructor I was talking to made it pretty clear that they have a lot of instructors. They have more than two Zumba instructors. They just don't have enough classes for them. So when I was talking to her, she was kind of like, I don't know. I mean, maybe if we expand the space, they'll add more Zumba classes. But for right now, it's just the two of us. And I don't want to take someone else's class. I was really just wondering if they needed subs. And she kind of made it seem like we have subs. We have too many actually, because none of them have classes to teach. Anyway, I posted about this on my Instagram stories. So those of you who follow me and watch my stories, maybe you already saw this, but when I got home, I basically was just thinking more about it. And I was like, you know what? Let's just speak our dreams right now. And I was talking about this with Finley and he totally agreed that this sounds like an amazing idea and a dream for me to make come true. But I really want to find a studio space or a gym space or even just like a community center, Stardew Valley vibe <laughs> for my gamers out there. And I wanna see if they'll allow me to teach a Zumba class there in Brattleboro so that I don't have to go to New Hampshire or Massachusetts just to take a class. Like I know that there are people in Brattleboro 
who want to take Zumba classes. I've seen their posts on the Brattleboro Facebook pages asking for instructors and there just isn't a big gym here. A lot of Vermont has this thing where they just don't really like big corporations, which is fine, but it is a struggle for big corporations like gyms. But anyway, back to my dream. Basically the dream is to reach out to a bunch of kind of bigger spaces that may be able to accommodate me and kind of pitching myself and saying, hey, I'm Megan, I'm a 26 year old certified Zumba instructor. I'm looking to bring Zumba to the town of Brattleboro. I wanna have a judgment-free joy-led class where we just are all able to let loose and you know form a Zumba community because that's what Zumba has been for me is community regardless of the state I've lived in and for how long or whatever like Zumba has always been there and I want that for other people as well and for myself you know so I found some places last night that I started kind of reaching out to and researching and I'm just gonna keep trucking along pitching myself to them and seeing if they want to add a Zumba class to their facility and in the meantime with that as well I also want to try to find a senior living center or a retirement home or yeah assisted living something like that where I could teach a chair class or a Zumba gold class depending on what the residents need and when I posted about that a lot of people on Instagram reached out to me and said that they or a family member of theirs works at like a nursing home or you know a senior center and they need more of that like they need more people trying to offer that to the community because it brings the residents so much joy and when I took my teacher training the woman who was leading it her name was Eliza Stone and she was like I volunteer once a week at a senior center and do Zumba classes for them and she was like it is like the highlight of my week the only heartbreaking thing is when there's people in your community who maybe have Alzheimer's and they don't remember you or remember why they take the class or remember how they got there and and she was like there have been a lot of moments like that but she also told this really beautiful story about one of the men who takes her class and he has Alzheimer's and he yeah doesn't really always remember her or you know why he came but he remembers the songs she plays and sometimes he'll break out into song in the middle of her class and like stand up and start singing and it just like it brings tears to my eyes thinking about that it's so beautiful like how regardless of your age or what's happening in your brain, you can still connect to music. And I just think that teaching and instructing with seniors would really be fulfilling for me. Like, I wanna connect with them. I wanna respect my elders. I wanna chat with them. I wanna have, you know, some kind of a way where they can share their stories with me and also a way where I can be, you know, a part of their community and what they've been building for so long. And so I'm really interested in today also researching that. So that's my current MO with the Zumba thing. That's my dream and that's what I wanna do. And also it would be really great to find a space that you guys could come to to take classes in person in Vermont if you're like visiting or passing through the area or whatever where you wouldn't have to have a gym membership to go there or anything like that and maybe we could do some kind of like a pay by class option just depending on the facility so that's my dream anyway so I totally forgot that I wouldn't be able to use the upstairs bathroom and shower when I left Zumba last night thank god I showered the night before because my hair really isn't that like greasy or dirty but when I got home last night because I couldn't walk up up the stairs and you know step on the polyurethane I literally took a bath in the sink and when I say bath it was more of a, a towel scrub you know I just like wet a towel under the faucet and was like washing off all of my armpits and all my cracks everywhere can't use the shower it smells too bad up there but last night when I got home Finley was pretty stressed out just about the whole floor situation which he actually recorded a kind of story time clip about this morning that I'm going to insert into the renovation video for the bedroom. Right now I have no idea how long that video is going to be. I haven't even started editing it because we're not done with the bedroom renovation or even close to being done so it doesn't really like feel as relevant for me to edit right now but I really think maybe I should today start working on that just so I can kind of get a gauge on how long that video is. But anyway, I'm doing the laundry now. Finley just went to get more polyurethane coating from the store because as you guys will hear in that story time, um, it was not enough. 
what he got yesterday. So he went to go pick up some more cans of that and I'm just here big chilling, folding my laundry and talking to all of you. And I know I keep saying it, but it is a f***ing scorcher outside, okay? We don't have air conditioning. We just have like window units. I actually have my clothes on top of a giant AC unit right here. So I think maybe today I might try to hook up this giant AC to this room just so we can be a little bit more comfortable, but obviously I need Finley's help for that. And if he doesn't want to do it because he's doing other projects, then maybe I'll just live in my sweatiness for a little bit and just shower with the faucet in the sink. But this is the reality of our life right now. Okay, guys, I just kind of wanted to give you like a little update and say yesterday was a chaotic day, not just for me, but also for Finley and some things went wrong and we're just kind of rolling with the punches and moving on with what we can. And I'm still trying to do all of the fun things in between, like finding a Zumba community for me and cuddling my little doggies and getting work done and, you know, just trying to keep you guys in the loop all at the same time. But I'm probably gonna end off this vlog here. I know that it's getting a little lengthy. I know that I don't have to do this, but I do wanna apologize for this not being the most positive video ever but there's always little pockets and moments and we are still so grateful that we live in this house. None of the things that I spoke about or vented about yesterday negate the fact that we are so happy and lucky to live here, but sometimes there are just some little roadblocks along the way, you know, with getting the renovations all in order and learning to live with certain things because we chose to live in this house while we're renovating it. So it's like, okay, you need to be okay with the change that's happening when you do something like that. Like you need to be able to adjust and pivot and be like, okay, I'm gonna go do this now or I'm gonna go live on this side of the house. And it is helping me be a lot more dynamic and open to change than I was before because I've vented about this in the past with you guys. Like that is a huge struggle for me is to be okay with change. And really the past year of my life since we moved out of Oregon, I've just gotten so much better about coping with change. So if any of you can relate to that, just know that uh, with practice it does get better and i love you thank you for listening thank you for watching leave me a little smiley face down below to brighten my day just a cute little colon in parentheses smiley okay i loved when you guys commented the little hearts on one of my previous vlogs it was really nice to go through all the comments and see how many of you had watched until the end i love you i know that these vlogs are long and i always appreciate you guys sitting through all of them so thank you so much and if you guys want to support our renovations and hear about all the behind the scenes and stuff and details and financials and all that kind of good stuff you can always support me on patreon patreon.com slash megan hughes for as little as one dollar a month for my first tier so love you all right i'll see you in the next video stay smiling bye y'all